The fourth game is going live with uh, Frost being the map and starting at the bottom right we have the last regular player for Team Liquid. It is Bunny. If he falls victim to his Protoss opponent as well then uh, TL is down to the ace player in this best of nine at the ace at Team Story Cup. Starting all the way at the top right of Frost we have JYP and he's been killing it today. I have no idea what EG feeds him, probably a lot of monster, whatever it is, I want some because he is on such a roll right now and uh, EG fans are happy. One other guy that's pretty happy right now as well is Total Biscuit who's currently watching that match and he has already expressed earlier that JYP is on his fantasy team and he wasn't quite sure if JYP would be able to deliver but ever since then since the game started every time JYP wins when he's in the chat and he's just like yes more points for my fantasy team and he's probably rooting for the Protoss player quite hard now in uh, this particular match so let's see what JYP can do to beat him for now we have the gateway started and all the way at the bottom right gas of course taken together with the barracks for the reaper Bunny really needs to come up with some kind of strategy to take down JYP. And so far, the Protoss player has a lot of momentum going his way. That's like one of these scenarios where you feel you are invincible, and he might as well be. Because Team Liquid didn't really find a solution to take down EG, and TL was the favorite going into this match. I think they were thinking about Jadong a lot, and probably thought about JYP as well, and were like, yeah, we have to be careful, the guy is good. But they did not expect him to take down Hero, Snoot, and Tasia of all people so pretty impressive play by him so far and I feel that people underestimated him a little bit myself included right now we have the perfect scout for JYP he gets the first scout off at the bottom right couldn't get any better for him is trying to just piss off the worker line a little bit and so far the probe is doing a really good job at that Protoss units in general are really good at annoying people I feel like Especially like probes, they're a little bit like the little sister that always annoys you or the little brother that starts a pawn download when you are currently playing a league match in whatever league in whatever game and suddenly your game begins to lag and you need to pause and you need to run over in the other room, smack him across the face and tell him to stop that. You told him a hundred times already, no pawn downloads when you are playing a league match, it's important. And yeah, it's like all these nuisances and especially in the early game, the probes are the best. So they are like the little brothers and sisters that we all love and hate at the same time. Zealot is already moving in and having a, a very interesting encounter here against the Reaper. That Reaper is going to have quite the blast, so one dead Zealot. Uh, that's what we see here. You don't need a sixth sense to actually see that happening. There's nothing else on the map just yet that could help the poor Zealot out, so... Yeah, this is one of those scenarios where the Zealot just walks over there. Get, he gets warped in from I, you know, like all the way. And he's like, pretty happy for life, for I. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna kill shit. And then he moves in and he sees the Reaper and he's just like, fuck my life. And he knows already he's dead, so the entire life fire thing works out in his favor, I guess. But without him actually accomplishing anything. So it's pretty wasted life right there. But be it as it may, we have already a pile and being built on the left side of the map by JYP. It looks like we're gonna see some uh, proxy action by our Protoss player. And to the top right, it's still the Reaper that is having a quick look over at the Protoss player's main base. The Mothership Core is out though and can help him. We also have the first Stalker being built and uh, all the way at the bottom right, Bunny at the same time is just adding his own command center and additional barracks. But let's see what JYP wants to do here. It is the Twilight Council. Might as well be the Dark Shrine. We're gonna find out later on, but for now he's making sure that Bunny has no idea what's going on here. And so far, JYP has been pretty sneaky in most of his games, so that could be quite devastating for Bonnie if he is not prepared. The Nexus is on his way, nearly completed for JYP, our Protoss player's main base is, I feel, still very much unscouted. I don't think that Bunny got a good look in uh, this. No, he didn't. Has no idea what's going on. So at this point, he also has to consider that anything might be happening here. Maybe a Stargate, maybe a Twilight Council. He doesn't really know. What we know though is that at this point we do not see a probe over there, so there's the dodge right into the main base. That's interesting, like that is very interesting, like hide the Twilight Council in the middle of the map and then build the dark shrine in your main base and the Reaper scouts it. Uh, yeah, that's taking mind games and the meta game to a level that I cannot comprehend, so I'm at a loss here. 
looking at the units killed, we have no probe killed. So it's not like the probe that built the Twilight Council over here thought, all right, let's venture a little bit toward that Zelaga Watchtower and suddenly got taken out by a stalk or anything like it. So he deliberately moved it back. He probably thought that once the Twilight Council is done and he drops the Dark Shrine, there's nothing that Bunny can really do to get into his main base unless he really wants to drop a scam. In the end, it works out for Bunny. He knows exactly what's going on right now. Already has a couple of uh, Marines all the way at the front. We see him at the same time, though, with uh, just energy being saved up here. No, not even that. He calls down the mule. Like, where is that? Okay, he doesn't need the, the missile turret immediately, but there it is. Alright, I was worried for a second that he didn't realize what was happening, that, that he might have not seen the structure and didn't click on it. So, yeah. So for now we have the Marines just moving back, taking down one of the forward pylons. To uh, the left we have another one already placed down. The two Stalkers are still standing guard and... Well, <laughs> it's still funny to just see that Twilight Count's leg like, in the middle of nowhere over there. So, let's see. So far we don't have any Stalkers, we have a double bunker at the front, a bunny playing uh, things safe. At least for now, up to the point where that Warp Prism is maybe gonna ruin his day here. Warp Prism already about to move in, Stim is nearly done. And let's see how that's going to work out. That, yeah, that DT moving in uh, is not going to have a pleasant day. Doesn't lose any hit points on the other hand, just a couple of shields. So now it's time for the warp prison. But guess what? The Marine already sees it. He's like, aha! Sherlock Marine is on the case and he knows exactly what's going on there. So he will be well aware that he needs a little bit more attention into his main, his main base as well. And there we go. Here comes the war prison. Can he get a stim and take that down? Maybe not quite just yet. But with the scan, he could at least take down that single DT. Yeah, okay. The DT is like, excuse me, could you please taxi me out of there? Because, yeah, that's not going to happen. There's way too much stuff there. And I think those boys know that I'm here. Even though I'm invisible. So, yeah, probably going to sneak back to the Protoss player main base, gets into the girl's locker room. I have no idea what he's going to do with this invisibility. But I'm pretty sure that if I was invisible, there were a couple of things that I would try. Being invisible is actually, like, awesome if you think about it. It's, it's a pretty cool skill to have. I think that there are still better ones out there in terms of superpowers, but invisibility is pretty smooth. At least or if you can turn it on and off. You need to be able to turn it on. The one thing that we also see is now a 44, 45 supply army trying to move in and bam, force fields, ah, denied. But at least he can take down the rocks and open that path a little bit broader. Looking at the harvest account, by the way, Bunny a little bit supply block, which is also going to rack up his supply block time up here. Um, not the most, like those statistics basically just saying a few things about the mechanics of a player. And there we go, moving in, bye bye Arkan, and look at that, ignores the photon overcharge, that by army has so much DPS right now, the plus one attack upgrade is done, and that's a dead nexus right there. Not only that, he might be able to take down that army too, because at the same time, JYP has a lot of his army supply down at the natural of his opponent, trying to make that work, but this by army here is doing so much, the Colossus, oh my god, JYP doesn't realize that the Colossus is in harm's way, nearly loses it, but in the end, the Marauder dies before the Colossus does, Right now, in resources lost, as you can see, we currently have uh, a lot being killed already by the Terran player. 2,250 and a lot of gas lost by JYP, and of course, it's especially annoying, the sentries, Arkan, and all those harvesters. That doesn't even account for the Nexus that we just scratched on for just a second, because he's down to one base. It's one mining base for him. And at the same time, JYP is trying to do some damage with the Warp Prison. Again, he was able to kill a couple of harvesters at the natural, but not in any way enough to really make up for the losses that he himself suffered at the top right. Single Marine is trying to play a hero here. There's like the Chuck Norris Marine or the Bruce Lee Marine trying to go in and just completely uh, sidekick everything. Didn't really work. So, uh, yeah, those roundhouse kicks just not strong enough. The Colossus is proving to be a little bit stronger. Third base being built by Bunny. And so far, Bunny is doing a very decent job in this game. He's ahead in overall supply. He has a really good upgrade status right now. He is so far heading into the plus one armor upgrade, getting not only the armory, but also the second engineering bay. Chasing down uh, the war prism with his Vikings, making sure that that war prism is not going to do too much later on. And with the Viking card in general, he can also meet the Colossus in case that JYP tries to move across the map and do some damage with that. So, very well played so far by Bunny. The Warp Prism still alive, by the way, and getting a little bit cheeky here, trying to fly past the Vikings. And, uh, yeah, those two at least are able to spot it in the end, so I guess it's going to die after all. Especially if the third Viking moves in, and that's exactly what we see here. 
maybe losing a, a one Viking over this. Yes, a nice blink forward by JYP. Not getting a second one though, because suddenly it's time for the Terran player to use another stim and take down two Stalkers in return. Well done by Bunny. Resources lost much, much better for the Terran player. And of course, it's still about that one base that he was able to get there. It's still that one base that he was able to... Uh, yeah, that he was able to uh, kill. So, uh, very well done. Currently looking at this, ten, 7 to 10 Harvesters and... Yeah, JYP just trying to come back somehow into this game and establish himself with a solid position against his opponent, maybe even a third base over here. But Bunny is just doing a much, much better job. The Viking count for him already looking really solid. Five so far, getting two additional ones. We have two Colossi and a third one coming up, so absolutely justified to commit this much to the Antia and Colossus in general. So, very well played by Bunny. And in terms of army supplies, of course, I had by 30, by the way, so it's like 80 to 56 at this point, with JYP just using another round of warp-ins. And I guess it's time for Bunny to move out and do some damage on his own. The one thing that he's lacking is Medibax. That's, of course, the struggle that you have as a Terran player if you're up against the Colossi build. You need to choose between Vikings and Medibax. He should probably go back to the Medibax production pretty soon, because at this point, every stim is really going to hurt him. That's the problem if you have a very low Medibax count. You need to make sure that you do a really good job with your stims, that you only stim when it's really necessary, and that you don't over stim, because that is going to be the biggest problem that you're going to face. Too many stims and your army is just not worth anything. Maybe a bit too much of a commitment here to Vikings. He already has nine and is going into two additional one. Considering that he has only two medivacs, he might want to have a few more of those, especially since then drops would also be a lot more dangerous to JYP because Bunny is playing a very straightforward style so far. Plus two, plus two on the way. Not playing bad by any means, but a little bit predictable as he cannot attack at multiple fronts because of the low medivac count. This base is something that he just spotted with the scan, so he might try to take the third one down. That would definitely help him quite a bit. The Stalker is still trying to get cheeky here, but one of them already down, a little bit too overzealous. Single Marine at the Zalnaga Watchtower providing a bit of vision for him, and he's going to move in with his army, and it's a pretty sick army at that. Still the commitment to the Vikings. No additional medivacs. The Viking count is at 11. It's going to be at 12 very soon. And uh, Colossi are not going to be a problem for him. He has the SCVs as well. He's going for the pain train here. He's going all in with this. Takes down the mothership core in a second. No focuses first on those Colossi. The first one is down. The second one about to die. He's doing a really good job at that. But all of those force fields at the front just saving time for JYP. And as mentioned before, the stims, they hurt. Double time up already being used, meaning that the uh, mothership core is without energy. SCVs all the way at the front. Another force field is cutting off this Terran army. And the most of those Vikings actually over committing and being taken out by the stalkers suddenly there are still three colossi and bunny has to be careful he's moving in but he lost his supply advantage that he had earlier takes down another base of JYP but the army supply is in his favor the worker supply is so though far below the one that we see for JYP 60 to 21 meaning if JYP forces this back then bunny is in a lot of trouble once again the army supply is still in his favor but it's the worker count that of course really counts here as well so mules can only go this, uh, this far. We have him currently dropping uh, three of them and he has still a very very solid income but yeah over committing with the Vikings was really a big problem there. At first it looked like he could take down all of those Colossi quite easily and he took down the first one right off the bat, the second one about to die and then he just decided to fly with the Vikings over the Marines. The force field stopped the Gaia units from moving in and protecting them. The Stalkers took the Vikings out and now he still has to face those Colossi. Another snipe at another base. So JYP really down in income since he only has one mining base at this point. He's getting the no another Nexus of course already. So Bunny is by no means out of this game just yet and he still has the much much better army but it's really difficult for him to do anything against those Colossi and look at this army there is no energy on those medevacs so maybe JYP able to do something about it he's still fighting against a couple of stray bio units that bio Bunny sends out over to the natural but Bunny thought that he could kill JYP he really thought that he could move in and take him down right away and that did not work out for him at all so he might have tried to do that a little bit too fast right now with a very nice conquer but look at that damage done by those colossi he's trying to move in and take them down bunny dropping in supply but the army supply is still quite even it's just the tech that it's way too strong for jyp i cannot believe that jyp is back in this game and might now take down bunny it really looked like an absolutely 100 percent win for bunny 
but he was a bit too eager to take this game. That commitment with the SCVs was not ne really necessary. It was something that was very difficult to hold, but it was all about the Viking count. With such a low medivac count, you cannot afford to leave those Colossi alive. You have to take them down. They do the area of effect damage. They do all the damage to the Marines, to the Marauders, so you need to kill them. The Vikings were not able to do that, and with only two medivacs, there was no healing power whatsoever. All the SCVs crumbled within seconds, and now with a few more Vikings, maybe, maybe Bunny can come back here, but an Archon and the Zealots working against the Vikings, most of them already dead and dying. JYP doing an amazing job of keeping those Colossi alive. He has that natural once again. And this game, what a comeback by JYP. Bunny playing it so strong, having a massive, massive lead in the series, or in this game at least. And then suddenly it's JYP time. Bunny trying to take it in one big swoop. And in the end, it just turns out that JYP was playing this a little bit too smart. Able to keep the Colossi alive, taking down all of the Vikings. And now things are very dire for Bunny. 34 army supply against 60 and the unit composition that we see here just is unbeatable That is something that Bunny will not be able to take down He has a force over to the top right is trying to go for the counter aggression But the DT defense will take him out eventually This is just some, uh, something where he cannot win any longer. He doesn't have the units anymore He's down to 15 supply. He knows exactly what's going on here GG being called and JYP he takes game number four and suddenly EG is a single map away from all killing Team Liquid.